Well, some of the top takeaways would be tied to this issue of plasticity. Uh, primarily, the issue of plasticity plays itself out in young people in the world of vulnerability. So with neurologically where they are at in their point in life, they've got these two roads, this high road that is tied to uh, issues related to, you know, what are the cues that I should become aroused by? What's the meaning of sex? That's this cortical road. And that can be thrown off very easily by pornography. Uh, they also have this low road as well that's tied to the issues of motivation and arousal as well. Uh, these are things that can be trained. And and so what pornography does is it trains both the high road and the low road, and at the end of the day it becomes very, very dysfunctional. So how do we step back then and acknowledge these vulnerabilities and that people can get to really bad places, whether it's porn addiction or even just unhealthy sexual attitudes, or maybe if they're using porn strategically for purposes that really aren't sexual but are tied to their emotional state or you know, mood disorders or depression or any of those numbers of things. So I think understanding what the root cause is, pornography is a way to sort of self-medicate. And you can self-medicate for a lot of different reasons. That's the nice thing about pornography, if you want to even think about it that way, is it's like a poly drug. It can be used to treat a lot of different things. And so once you understand what these things are and where they're located, either on that high road or low road, it's best to then take strategies that will exploit the brain's natural desire to be retrained and to have this plasticity now be harnessed for the good of the person. The issue is not getting rid of all of your memories. What you want is those memories to not have power over you in the moment and actually to be developing a new way of thinking about yourself sexually. We think about how people are trained, young people, old people today, uh, uh, as, as pornosexuals. That really, they're, they're not even concerned about men and women anymore. It's the pornography that is what arouses them. The thought of going and viewing porn is what arouses them. And can we change the language to get them back to being something that's a little more in lines with I would, what I'd argue is God's plan? For me, that means being donosexual. That means making choices, you know, building my world in such a way to take advantage of all of these, these riches that I have neurologically to make me drawn into my wife. At some point, I kind of stopped even having to make the choices. Much like the addict sort of loses their ability to make choices, I've lost that ability. But that's a very different type of addiction. I'm addicted to my wife. I'm sexually oriented towards my wife. That has fidelity to the gospel of Christ that's very, very different. And I think is kind of a, a just a different way of talking about sexuality that maybe will inspire people rather than discourage them.